everyone. We're up here camping on an island in the Kuatha Lakes. Here with some friends of mine, Aaron and Danielle. There's Aaron getting up now. Kathy's still sleeping. We're going to sneak off for a little bit of fishing before everybody gets up before breakfast. Morning, buddy. Morning. Cup of tea, mate? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Can't leave the island without a cup of no, tea. No, no, no. Did you sleep well last night, mate? Oh, yeah. yeah. I slept like a log. So what are we going to be going for then? We've got a whole sort of array of equipment in our boat today and we're going to be fishing for panfish, bass, muskie. Don't be species specific. Just come up here and have fun. That's what it's all about. There you go, mate. As you can see, we've got quite the little village set up here. We've got Kathy in a tent over there. I better keep it down. Aaron and Danielle over there. I'm set up here. Aaron and Danielle actually came out to the island on a canoe, brought all their equipment with them, everything. As always, I can't stress enough, we've just made tea here, as you know. Don't just turn off your stove, turn off the main valve as well, just in case. What do you say we get going, mate? Let's get going. All right. There you go, mate. I'll get the back one here. On this week's show, Sean and his guests are camping on a secluded island located on beautiful Lower Buckhorn Lake. Sean has chosen an island that is easily accessible from the town of Buckhorn, Ontario, as two of his guests are making their way to the campsite via canoe. They all set off from a resort that is conveniently located in the heart of Buckhorn, just over the bridge on the right-hand side as you drive into town. Lower Buckhorn Lake is located just 20 minutes from the town of Peterborough, Ontario and only 1.5 hours northeast of Toronto. The lake is scattered with scenic islands, offering some fantastic camping opportunities for less expensive or simply solitary escapes from the hustle and bustle of busy city life. Sean always looks for islands that offer cover from wind, yet have large enough clearings to pitch his tents. If heading out by boat, Look for islands that offer deep enough water and clear shorelines to pull in and unload. Make sure that you have everything you need for the weekend before heading out onto the lake, especially if you are embarking on a canoe. On today's show, Sean and his guests will demonstrate what you will need to set up camp on a solitary island, while enjoying some fantastic mixed bag angling, pointing out that you do not have to be species specific demonstrating that the most important element of a camping trip with friends is to simply have fun and enjoy the great outdoors. Lower Buckhorn Lake offers a variety of sport fish species, including muskie, small and largemouth bass, walleye, carp, perch, crappie, bluegills, and other panfish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Yeah, there's fish chasing bait over here, Aaron, up by this marker. That's a little smally. What is it, small mouth, Aaron? Look at it. I think so, the way it jumped like that. Want me to grab him for you, mate? There we go. Let me try and grab him here without getting hooks in me. Nice when they hit those top water yeah, baits. Only a couple of jerks there and bam. It's a very uh, visual sort of strike. There we go. Yeah. Here you go, mate. There's your fish. Smallmouth bass guys on the top water. And there it goes. Oh, oh second jump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. It's a muskie. Oh, yeah. Oh, told you we was getting one off this rock. Well, oh, this feels a little better, Aaron. Oh, yeah. Look at Oh. Wow. I thought I hit a rock. It just stopped dead. Are you all right, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of fun on this light tackle, I tell you. Oh yeah, he's a nice fish. Good thing about oh, he's barely hooked there, Aaron. Yeah. Good thing about these spinner baits, you've got a chance of catching a good, good variety of fish, from muskie to bass, even walleye. Let's try and grab him here. Get him into the boat. I'm gonna hand land this fish. He wanted that. Yeah. He just hammered it. There we go. Look at that, mate. Nice. Excellent. 
we were actually fishing for bass, but as you can see, we got a nice bonus fish here this morning. Get this guy back in order. There he goes. Get another one. Oh mate. yeah, that's all right. right. When we're up on the islands, we'll generally wash in the lake, but hey, if you want the uh, comforts from home, get yourself one of these solar powered showers. We bought this up so Danielle can wash her hair tonight. So you can see, just release a little clip here, and basically you've got running water. These things are handy actually just for washing your hands. One thing I will su definitely suggest to you and strongly recommend is get yourself biodegradable soap. Everything here is going to end up in the lake at some point and you want to be environmentally friendly, you don't want to pollute the lake, so use this. As you can see, camping doesn't necessarily have to be uncomfortable. We have a regular home away from home here, if you like. We've got the kitchen set up here, Kathy's making us some uh, breakfast as I speak. You see all our food out here while we're preparing it, but make sure you put it away, put it back in the cooler when you're done and secure the cooler to stop any animals getting. If you're in an area where there might be bears, for instance, you might want to tie or secure a rope around your cooler and hoist it up into a tree so the animals can't get in it. I'll give you a little tour of our village, as I like to call it. I've got a large tent here, five-man tent. Gives me a little extra room for uh, storage and so on for any additional equipment we have with us. I've got a small tent set up here for Kathy. We've got Danielle and Aaron set up over on the other side here. Anytime you come camping to an island like this, bring garbage bags. Any garbage, tie it up in a tree like this, keep everything all together. Anything you bring in here, take it out. If you find additional garbage when you're here, take that out too. It's not going to hurt. We've got a boat anchored up here. We've got a double anchor system so it doesn't drift into the island. You'll notice we have a canoe here. Danielle and Aaron actually paddled out yesterday afternoon with all of their equipment goes to show you, you don't need a boat to come out and enjoy this uh, excellent scenery and, and fabulous fun opportunities that you can have camping on islands like this. Come on. Oh, it's a little baby one. Now, what's this one? He's not colorful. Um, that one's another sunfish. Is it? I still have one. Some damn lucky wheat. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I think it's a perch, but I'm not sure. It looks more like a bass. Is this a bass? Is that the leech still hanging on there? Yep, this leech is a lucky leech, I think. You got it? Got it. So this is a bass? A little bass. Yep, a little one. Oh, and grow up and be nice and big. Yeah, he's on. Awesome. Is it a decent size? Oh, it's bigger yeah. than the other one. What kind did you get this time? Oh, look. You didn't even take the leech. That's nice. good. Sweet. Good job. Is there another pumpkin seed? No, this one doesn't... It kind of looks like a pumpkin seed. It's not really a yellow one, though. Stomach. Can you get your whole be. worm? Take a look. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't have the same colors, does it? Got a bit more orange on the yeah. front chest. There we go. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Bole H2 Optics. Danielle and Kathy went in search of sunfish in four to seven feet of water. The girls looked for areas with scattered weed growth and boulders close to camp with their 15-foot canoe. They targeted weed pockets, areas where they knew these somewhat scrappy little fish would be hiding. Sunfish primarily feed during daylight hours, making them easy to catch all throughout the day. Bluegills and pumpkin seed are plentiful throughout the Kawartha chain of lakes, even from the shore or a dock. They are an ideal species to whet a child's appetite for fishing, as good numbers of fish are generally caught. 
ultralight equipment is best suited for pursuing and successfully enticing these panfish into striking. The girls used 5 foot 6 inch ultralight rods combined with small spinning reels spooled with 6 pound test monofilament fishing line. Artificial baits are also highly effective for a whole variety of panfish species such as perch, bluegill, pumpkin seed, crappie and rock bass. Both artificial and live bait presentations work well. Kathy and Danielle baited their hooks with leeches and worm pieces fished under a small slip float. Three small split shot were used to submerge their hook baits to the desired depth of three to four feet. A number four hook was sufficient to ensure hooking up with the biting fish. If you are a novice angler or you simply want something to occupy the kids at the cottage or campsite, try pan fishing. It can be both relaxing and fun for the whole family. Weather conditions through the whole weekend varied from full sun to overcast with light rain. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Holy cow, oh, look at that. <laughs> Did you see that yes. thing come out of the water there? Acrobat. My God, oh, he's, the bait's come out and stuck in his side. You see that when he jumped? He was hooked. And when he jumped and flipped out of the water, the bait slid back and somehow we've still managed to hang on to him. So I'm just going to grab him right there. Yeah, line's wrapped around too. Okay, we got him. There we go. We got him. There you go. Okay, I'm just going to grab him like this for now and get that hook out of him. He's wrapped. It's, he's not even hooked. He's looped in the line where the bait came out. That Classic. is incredible. Did you see that thing fly out of the water? That was just amazing. I tell you guys, spinner baits, it's the way to go on an overcast day like this. We're out here originally fishing for bass. We've now hooked into two musky. Look at that guy. And as you can see, a lot of fun on the light tackle. Let's put him back. Whoa! <laughs> Bloody. Excellent, mate. Excellent. These things are just incredible. Oh, nice. Look at that. Right in the corner of the mouth. Nice. You know what? It's I was just thinking I'll put on a top water bait because it's so calm here. And I think I'll stick with this. <laughs> I don't have a leader on here. I was actually hoping to get in some, some largemouth in these weeds here. Beautiful. See him jump there? Yeah. They're so acrobatic, these little guys. Unbelievable. Okay, let's get him back. A little high flyer. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, look at that. Straight down to the weeds. Excellent. Fish on. Good one. Yeah. How's it feel, Aaron? Oh, it feels good. Feels like a good one? Or maybe it's just a bunch of weeds around. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely not a perch anyway, that's for sure. Did he just hammer that thing? I was actually looking in the other direction. It was actually hit. paused. Was wow, it? it looks pretty good. Okay. There we go. Oh, nice fish, mate. Nice fish. Look at that. The tail's a little yeah, beaten up. A little there. bit of tail beaten up there. You just get these pliers here. That's just the one hook. There we go. Oh. Okay. Nice. Your fish, mate. Nice. Want a picture with that? Yeah, sure. Excellent. CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Okay, mate. Smile. We'll try and make him look a little bigger for you, Aaron. How's that? <laughs> okay. Perfect. All right, let's get him back. I'm just going to show you a couple of differences here to identify smallmouth and largemouth bass. In my left hand here is a largemouth bass, my right hand is a smallmouth bass. You'll see there's some distinct coloration differences. The largemouth here is usually a darker green with black spots down the side and as its name presents, a much larger mouth. The smallmouth generally has a smaller mouth obviously and uh, the coloration is more of a bronzy color, hence the name bronze back. You'll notice the three distinct bars on the face of the smallmouth, very different from the largemouth. You'll also notice that the eye of the smallmouth lines up with the corner of its mouth, whereas the largemouth, the corner of the mouth proceeds past the eye. Anyway, we'll get these guys back in the water and go get some more. Well, everyone, 
that's all we have time for this week on Urban Outdoor Adventures. Had a good weekend, right guys? Yeah, it was yeah, great. great. We'll have to come up and do this again. Listen, if you want any tips on today's show, techniques, uh, maps and directions on how to get here, go to our website. We'll see you next week on Urban Outdoor Adventures.